Welcome back to Superior Sunrise. We did a little switch. I'm Beth Bryan, and, and uh, we thank you for joining us this morning. I'm sitting here live in Fort Worth with Danny Jones, president of Superior Livestock, who is no stranger to Superior Sunrise. And then joining us via, tele via phone, I'm sorry, is Undersecretary of Agriculture for Marketing and Regulatory Programs, Greg Iba. Thank you both very much for being on this morning. Sure, Beth. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for asking. Undersecretary. Undersecretary Iba, this is Danny Jones, and I, I would uh, just like to thank you again for, for being here with us, taking time to do this today. Uh, as, as you know, the, the trade of uh, fed cattle is unique and in that there, there are so few buyers uh, due to the consolidation in the packing industry. Uh, what special burden of oversight does that uh, place uh, or create for USDA in your role? Well, you know, I think that um I'm fortunate in that uh, I have a little bit of background in the beef industry. As uh, I think you know, I uh, have an active cow-calf operation in central Nebraska that while I'm here spending time in Washington, D.C., in my role in marketing and regulatory programs, my son is um, uh, managing the day-to-day -day operations of our our operation. But, you know, through those... Uh, years and the experiences also serving as director of ag in nebraska i uh, have had the opportunity to wear a number of different hats from experiencing the markets to now um, having oversight over how those markets react and so you know what we do here at usda is we have responsibility for making sure that uh, the market reacts appropriately and that producers are treated fairly. And that is done through our Fair Trade Practices Division. And we look at not only livestock, but we also uh, look at produce uh, uh, growers and producers as well to make sure they're being treated fairly. So we have lots of experience in this area at analyzing markets and trying to look for signals that might say things are out of balance. Uh, one of our other major responsibilities that helps us with this is market news reporting. And so not only are we looking at the market reaction on a day-to-day -day basis to be able to help producers evaluate what the market are doing but it gives us the background to when we need to take a, a peek under the hood at some of the things that are going on we have data available to us um, and so uh, the Packers and Stockyards Division is able to access all this data that we have uh, accumulated in the event that we do enter into an investigation. Well you know I think that that was you know Prior to our, our interview with you, Undersecretary, um, I got to do a lot of research, and I think that was one of the unique things that you brought to the table is that you do have a lot of experience, um, you know, both from, um, you know, being a rancher yourself, but then also from the state, you know, and now federal government. And, and you know, like we, you and I were talking earlier before we came live on TV, you know, our viewers at home that are watching this show, 100% of them are affected by this. And so, you know, they are, they're, they're very thankful for this insight that you're giving them this morning. You know, we, we talk about um, the press release that was put out on August 28th where Secretary um, of, of Agriculture Purdue has um, asked for an investigation. And, you know, one of the things that kind of led up to that was the fire that we had at the Tyson processing plant. Um, and, you know, one of the things that have come out of that that we've always known is that our industry is very vulnerable to rumors, lack of information, and uh, this situation can create a potential for many of our producers to be taken advantage of. Um, we've got some graphs that we're going to put up now, and looking at these charts, it seems that this might have occurred. As our producers have received less, the wholesalers, retailers, and consumers are paid more, and those packet margin margins are increasing dramatically. Is this something that the USDA is concerned with, and, and are they looking into uh, to this? Well, obviously, uh, that is exactly, and that's why we have uh, announced right away that we were going to do two things right after the fire. One of those is we were going to make sure that inspectors were inv available, whether they be uh, the health inspectors or the graders that uh, work in the plants that USDA supplies to make sure that uh, we could react to the reduction of capacity after the fire. You know, about 5% of the uh, 
uh, harvest capacity was affected when the fire broke out at the Holcomb plant and the plant had to shut down. So if the, uh, if the industry needed to move uh, cattle around and run different shifts, we uh, committed ourselves to be able to staff those shifts so that USDA made sure that we could clear the cattle through the marketplace. We also announced that we would be uh, monitoring the reaction within the marketplace uh, on prices and the, the relationships of prices. And you're correct, during that, that time period, we uh, uh, started to observe this spread that uh, began to occur where uh, uh, actually at the time we announced that we were moving into an investigation, it stood at the largest spread since data had been being collected between choice um, uh, cattle and the uh, the live cattle prices and so that was uh, uh, what told us that it would be appropriate for USDA to uh, begin a, a next phase of our investigation uh, which gave us the ability to um, share prices between market news and mandatory the data we gather through the mandatory price reporting statutes with the Packers and Stockyards Division to be able to look further at the market. Undersecretary, uh, the uh, separation in the box beef price and, and, uh, and the fed cattle prices would seem to make sense according to supply and demand as, uh, as the supplies of, or as the availability to uh, slaughter cattle, shackle space goes away, the, the, uh, the demand for the product would get higher, so the box beef price going higher, the fed cattle price going lower would be natural reactions if the, if the uh, slaughter actually went down. But uh, if we can look at that second graph, it also shows, and again, uh, we understand not asking you to make a judgment call on what occurred during an investigation, but uh, this graph shows that the slaughter actually went up uh, which uh, kind of flies in the face of the the separation and the other other uh, graphs there. So uh, I know that that that's as you said part of why USDA is looking into this. And again, on behalf of the industry, uh, I'd like to thank you for for reaching out in that way for for the entire agency. So I think we did see a reaction in the marketplace that maybe was accentuated by the fact that uh, we were coming up on the Labor Day weekend where demand for beef by retailers is strong. There had also been uh, rumors running throughout the latter part of this summer or expectations that uh, because of the numbers of cattle and feedlots and the pressure that they were anticipated to be put on the uh, the marketplace that there would be a natural uh, depression in in price and so we had seen retailers delaying some of their purchases uh, in anticipation of that uh, price decrease even in the face of knowing that they were going to need product uh, for Labor Day so I think part of what happened was reaction in the marketplace in that when that plant, uh, the fire was announced and we knew that we were going to lose slaughter capacity, I think there was a reaction by retailers to say, oh dear, I need to get plenty of supply in place to be able to have meet my c customers' expectations uh, for Labor Day weekend. At the same time, uh, I think feedlots thought, oh dear, what am I going to do? I need to get these cattle cleared. And so, uh, at the same time that retailers were bidding up for box beef, uh, feedlots were saying, I need to clear supplies and maybe accepted lower bids. So we had this uh, opposite reactions that helped drive that, that spread. I think what the key is, is how long is you know that reaction how long should that be sustained and is it natural that uh, it should come together over time and what is that that uh, timeline where we should see that pull together again and so that's part of what our economists uh, through the Packers and Stockyards division will also be looking at is was the reaction appropriate was the length of time it's lasting appropriate? What what is all what else is going on in the marketplace? And do we see any evidence that there is any price manipulation going on? 
well, Under Secretary Iba, I, I think that you made valid points, and I know that our viewers at home really appreciate the opportunity to be able to hear this firsthand and directly from, from you. I think one of the, the big takeaways from this is this really was, this investigation really was a grassroots push, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, to start this. And so it's really important to get involved and, and be an advocate for yourself. So we appreciate you taking some time, um, you know, from your busy schedule to visit with us and, and inform and, and provide some more information for our viewers at home. Um, thank you very much for being on, Danny. Thank you for being here and, and helping me with that with that interview and we appreciate both of you when we return we'll close the show with world champion auctioneer ralph wade